Yeah, inshaAllah for the question and answer there's one question that, that came in through email inshaAllah and uh, uh, Lloyd why would I talk I hear myself so loud and then if I turn the volume I can't hear his, his question. A'udhu Billahi Shaitan I just hear myself so I have to turn the volume down then I can't hear him talking. No, they'll clean it later if they can find it. Somebody had emailed and asked that, that the verse in which Allah said, don't take awliyaullah as your protectors like the Christians and the Jewish people took their rabbis and said, please explain this and how does it uh, make reference to having a shaykh and a guide? Again, these, these types of… Uh, questions from uh, the Wahhabi belief system and how it infiltrates Ahlul Sunnah and usually through Qur'an tafsir classes that you should not take. In these days of, of extreme danger and difficulty your tafsir class has to be with someone strong in tariqah. Tafsir means somebody's interpretation and they're not reading you a known tafsir they're reading you the tafsir of Wahhabi scholars or that person is giving their own interpretation. So it's not something holy, it's the person's interpretation of something immensely holy. So the example for us is that Qur'an like a beatific water that has no equal but the, the cup is poisonous and that's where you're going to sort of suffer is that the cup has to be like gold has to be a heart that's like gold, that's sanctified and, and stamped by Allah that what come from this person's mouth will only refresh you and nourish you. And that's the danger because as soon as somebody emails like that, that's uh, yeah that's a sign that be very careful. You know Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah is very clear, we call wajib al and it's mandatory in Islamic belief to follow. And that you're not by yourself, you don't have the, the gates of, of making your own tafsir open for you and you don't make up Islamic law with you know one billion muftis. There's an Islamic hierarchy and there's an Islamic structure. And wajib al means it's mandatory to follow. So as Sayyidina Muhammad showed a sign of humility and waited for Sayyidina Jibra'il. And the holy companions they're called Sahabi because of their companionship with Sayyidina Muhammad And then the scholars who came after they were the companions of the companions what we call Tabi'een. And then the Tabi'een they had also who followed that they came to Islam and they were Tabi Tabi'een. They were the, the, the talibs and the students of the students of the students of the holy companions tracing their route all the way back to Sayyidina Muhammad And Naqshbandiyatul Aliya is then the unbroken golden chain that traces its lineage of teachers all the way back to the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. And that is the big Siddiq that traces back to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad It's a school of teaching and a school of realities that has an unbroken chain what they call the shajara of shaykhs that took from this shaykh, that took from that shaykh, that was taught by this shaykh, by that shaykh, by this shaykh all the way back to the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq which is from then the secret of Sayyidina Muhammad So tariqah is, is based on this Sunni belief that you have to have a lineage, you have to be connected, you have to be following the way of ihtiba and to atiullah, atiya rasul wa ulul amri minkum that our life is about following Allah obedience to Allah but Allah is impossible to fully comply so then Allah gives the understanding then obey the Messenger of Allah 
And the Messenger of Allah is not fully understood in its understanding for everyone. So then Allah gives another rope that comes down closer to us to Ulul Amri Minkum that the Ulul Am and the scholars of reality that are like ropes from the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah then describes hold tight to this rope and don't separate, tafaraq, don't make yourself into different uh, groups and all by yourself and all by your, your loneliness, is hold tight to their rope and to their reality. And throughout the Qur'an Allah is teaching, have a taqwa, ittaqullah wa qunu ma sadiqeen, have a consciousness, a taqwa and accompany these truthful servants. And then many, our whole our teaching is all of that. So when the email comes like that means they didn't even go through anything of the website, any of the teachings and the tariqah is based on all of that and not one clever person can send an email and, and think they found the whole problem with everything. That's it's ridiculous. The whole tariqah is based on, on all of that. All the tafsirs and teachings of Surat Al-Kahf and the reality that Allah gives an example for Kalimullah, the one whom speaks to Allah he still said he needs to go and find a servant. And the quality of that servant for the people who are looking for like professional Azhari shaykhs and who have you know many degrees and many diplomas, actually Nabi Musa was supposed to search for a servant that attained a rahmah and then was taught Divinely knowledges. Means not he was taught knowledges. And then we gave him rahmah which is exactly opposite that's happening now. If you take too many fiqh classes you're going to be a very angry mean person and you're not going to reach to rahmah because the law makes people too strict, too you know like uh, having friends who are police officers. You can never have a conversation with them. Have you ever sat with friends who are police officers? You can't have a conversation, everything's an interrogation. It's like, are we, are we having like a coffee here or you're interrogating me? And then understand, well, I'm sorry, it's just the way I am, Shaykh. So that's the nature of it, that when you read too much law books, you got too much uh, information in your head and you're not able to absorb it, understand it and apply it to the appropriate place and action and where that law was necessary to be understood. So they become very hard, everything is forbidden but then the danger is then they enter into the oceans of hypocrisy. It's forbidden for you but for me I do everything because they know the law. So they're going to verbatim tell you the law but doesn't mean that they even applied that law to themselves. So then once they enter into hypocrisy the heart completely flips from any barakah and rahmah of Allah then those scholars they're complete munafiq and that's that madhab. They say everything, they're dancing and they're, they're, they're not inviting any holy people for Mawlid but Beyonce is in Saudi Arabia. So, what are these people? They are going to teach us religion? First they first kick out Beyonce, then come and teach what, what religion is. There are people who say but they don't do. And as a result they put every difficulty onto religion because they work for shaitan. Shaitan wants things hard to, to make people run away. So one of these scholars was debating them and said, look can I ask you, are you working for shaitan or for Rahman? And he got very angry, he didn't answer, he says, because I tell you for Rahman I'm trying to take everybody to paradise. But shaitan he takes everybody to Jahannam and, and to to run away from the gate of paradise. So what are you doing with this type of teaching that you have? You really think people are, are coming to your understanding and they're, they're entering into paradise? Or you're scaring them from paradise and they're actually running in the, in the direction of Jahannam saying, I can't deal with you people, I don't understand your rules and I'm leaving it. So these are the dangers of that madhab, their belief system, stay away from them, stay away from their websites, stay away from their tafsirs, stay away from all their readings. Your heart is your most precious gift Allah gave to you, wuquf al-qalb means to keep your heart to be vigilant. 
You don't give your children to eat from this person, eat from that person, Let, let's see maybe a stranger can give my little child something to eat. You're vigilant that, no nothing can come to this child, no, my, my, my life is to, to protect them from every type of difficulty. Then Allah will ask, why you didn't protect your heart? Don't, don't let somebody talk to you that's going to bring a darkness into your ear and then begin to make a shock and a confusion into your heart. And that's why when you love the shaykh, stick with the shaykh, learn from their books, learn from their teachings. They got enough books, enough articles to feed you 10 lifetimes of knowledges and that's all you need. Just absorb yourself into that reality and begin to be dressed by it and blessed by it. And any, any type of person who wants to ask you about, oh what about these things, is this like a shirk? And, and, and the, the main point of that, uh, that whole discussion when they say, don't be like the Christians and the Jews who they took their rabbis as their lords. We describe that verse is in reference to somebody claiming to help you from Allah. If you find a guru or a, somebody on the internet that said, you know, I can take away all your problems, I can take away all your sicknesses, I can take away whatever Allah sent you, that's a shaitan and that's the danger. And we've given a talk before that the, don't take anyone to, to compete with Allah and that's what's meant by that holy verse. Is that Allah is saying that, don't, don't think that anybody is going to negate what I'm doing. If I took away money from you, nobody's du'a will change that. If I gave you sickness, nobody's du'a will give you a, a cure or healing. And that's why we, we talked that Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah understood very clear that they are merely Allah's servants. And they're here to encourage people towards good character and faith. They're not in the business of competing with Allah And that's the importance that whatever Allah has destined for the servant, that's Allah's will. The shaykh's duty is only to encourage that you should pray more, you should give more, you should be doing more, you should be focusing on your heart, you should be focusing on all these things. And both you and me we wait to see what Allah's will will be for you. So it's not about interfering with Allah's will, changing Allah's will, doing things that Allah doesn't want. So that's a known fact that the turuqs and the true turuqs and the, the lineage of these immense schools of reality, their only purpose is to be servants of Allah and to serve Allah's servants, means to encourage them towards goodness teach somebody how to fish instead of just giving them fishes. And that's what's important because whatever the student learns, they learn for all of eternity. And they're not here to take anyone's test but to help you in your life's tests. And that's the, the role of, of the shaykhs and, and real shaykhs. But they throw those types of questions to confuse people and say, oh yeah, what are you talking about? But no, they're, they're they're not legitimate concerns for anyone to worry about. The effects of food on ourselves in, in, in relation to controlling our ego and, and our, our character. I think we, we, we talked uh, many times about the energy and the practices of energy is that it's, it's all inclusive. That w what we eat, what we drink, uh, how we wash, all our meditation, all our practices, everything has uh, an energy in it and everything has negative energy in it and everything has positive energies in it. So most definitely the food has an immense amount of, of energy. So then imagine that the, the food that people eat, is it, is it food that we eat by people who are one, the food is halal, inshaAllah yes. And then the people interacting with that food, are they clean? Because once you study energy we begin to understand that the people and our biggest contamination is from people, from ourselves. The energy that we have we put into everything we do. So somebody who's in junoob, somebody who's not washed, somebody who, who's doing maybe bad things, having bad characteristics. Imagine they're touching all the, the meat 
that you're about to eat at the restaurant and they're putting all their desires, all their anger and not consciously, they're just putting it in there because they don't understand their energy beings. And then you come and, and, and quickly eat it and enjoy it and go and you don't know why a desire came into your heart, why you're feeling these bizarre desires or bizarre dreams and, and, and bizarre energies. So once we become conscious of our energy and conscious of our energy practices then yes we try to safeguard as best we can with the energies and, and the times that we have to eat from other things then we, we mention our, our du'as above them, Illa Sharaf an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatana shbandiyat al-aliyya means I'm saying by the sanctity and the immense blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, his holy family and holy companions. And then I'm reading the names of my shaykh for their nazar to bless this food I'm about to eat. That from the abundance of lights that dress these lights upon this to take away every negativity. And that from any goodness in anything I do grant it to their souls as a, as a gift. So alhamdulillah those things then help us to clean away negative energies of everything that we're eating and consuming and drinking then using our siwak, then using our meditation practices, breathing, doing our zikr and then keeping our wudu and all of our energy practices inshaAllah it makes everything to be a whole program. If, if we're doing certain things and we're still having you know different issues and anger and, 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 and uh, you know bad visions and bad energies then we have to look at everything like a checklist. Is what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, am I doing the meditation, am I keeping myself in wudu, am I doing my zikr, my awrad and keeping my connection. Because right now the energy becoming more and more fierce that this, these negative energies are all around, all around flying in and out. So if we don't sort of follow the entire system was like you know like you know bugs coming in through the house, you, you want to figure out where are they coming in or rats. It's like having a rat running around your house, you don't know where's this rat coming from so you plug up all the holes. You go around the perimeter, you go everywhere, you put the mesh, you put all these different things to stop the rat from coming in. So same thing if we're having you know issues in our, in our sleep and in our, in our energy and, and in our vision, meditation, whatever conditions coming then we have to go back to see where, where, where is the hole in my practice where this would be coming through inshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa What is it that insan has that the jinn would be jealous of and that make insan to be, be more regarded in Allah's sight? I think it's just a hasad. That the, the, the general understanding of hasad that وَلَقَدْ كَرَوْنَا بَنِي Adam, the while as they would put the, an honoured status upon Bani Adam and that if Bani Adam exceeds and excels they're granted uh, a tremendous amount of authority and power with Allah and that's just natural for any type of creation to be jealous. And especially a creation that is of a fiery nature in which they deem humans to be very fragile. That they move in and out of human without a problem, they occupy humans without a problem so they don't understand that what's this uh, big deal of this insan that Allah has honoured them. And that goes back to the talks of the four elements that our earth, our water, our, our breath earth, wind, water and fire. That understanding these four elements then is the, is the immensity of our reality and that they only have a, a, a state of a fiery and, and ethereal wind-like. They don't understand the reality of the earth as a grounding and that Allah gave earth within us as a mizan, as an immense scale. The earthly nature of us is capable of holding both water and extinguishing fire. As a result of that scale that it, it can contain 
all the elements that Allah want to put upon insan. So with a control of the earthly nature, their water element which is an angelic reality that you put water onto earth and things grow. And that's the reality of how they can grow in all of their understandings. At the same time anything of a fiery nature that comes to them, Allah gives them the ability to extinguish the fire and put down. So they don't have that ability because they're of a fiery nature so they continuously in a state of flux and unstable condition. So they're always a nation in fighting and war. We described last week, they're always fighting and their lifetimes are a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years. There are nations of them that have been fighting for thousands of years and they don't stop fighting. And that's why the humans are caught in all their battles. And their, their fight can go generation in a, in, a human, in a human's line, that from father to son to father to son, that fight of that, that being is still attached to that family. And because of that nature that's where they're jealous, that what Allah gave to this creation, they can control their water and angelic reality and be stable and things can grow from them. At the same time they can control the fire and have a peacefulness. That fire if it becomes controlled becomes a himma, becomes the zeal in which to conquer and not a fire in which to be angry and attack. It becomes the fire of their ishq and their love for Allah And as a result Allah blowed onto them from His Spirit. So they carry a nafas rahmah the Spirit of Allah's Divinely breath is being breathed into them if they reach towards their mizan and the reality of, of their scale. If they balance their water, bring their angelic lights and angelic nature and nourish their angelic reality and that they contain their fiery genie nature. Don't give yourself to the fire for that will be then the destiny of, of where you're going. Once they control that Allah will send His nafas into them until they breathe from Allah's Divinely Qudra and Divinely Power inshaAllah. Alaykum as salaam Yeah, some of these uh, New Age terms is astral projection <laughs> in tariqah, okay. Yeah, some of, some of the terms I'm not too familiar on how to equate it back to tariqah teachings. So we have our own teachings, we don't have astral projection. So yeah, you have to, you have to give me the exact tariqah understanding so that uh, that way I can give a, a, a more… Un, a better understanding in, in towards tariqah. But main thing is important from that type of question is stick with the tariqah teaching. Don't, don't, don't mix all these different philosophies and read all these different books and, and, and you know go here, click there, click there. You're going to enter into spiritual schizophrenia which is a very dangerous world to, to start mixing with. And I think we've described before we went to a, a, a place in New Mexico that was a spiritual place. And I, I, I don't think I've seen a more spiritually schizophrenic community in my life because they had mixed everything. And every practice has many beings attached to it. And when you do your practices you're bringing the energy that you know you're told to bring, the mu'min beings that are there, they're also bringing their energy into your practices. You create a whole environment like a masjid, you're calling the azan, they all know you're ready to pray. Imagine now you, you pick up a book with four different understandings and philosophies and each of them have their own beings and understandings and energies attached and then you invite them to your living room and begin. It become like a, the, a fist fight uh, with the fight club because all of them are, they have no compatibility, they're not even supposed to be in the same environment. They're wondering, what are you calling, you know, if you're Muslim and you're, you're doing these spiritual practices, they'll be very angry that, why are you calling this Hindu thing? 
And why is this Hindu creature coming? Why are you bringing this Hindu smell? Why is this energy from this Japanese Reiki and all of their, uh, their, their spirit elements coming? So everything has something attached to it. But in son he doesn't see and doesn't know so he says it doesn't matter. So I'll put all of them on, on to me just to, to look uh, modern and, and hip but very dangerous. Because if these beings all come and they start to mess up the person's understanding, thinking and Islam is, is pure and clean and if you want from what Allah wants to bestow the servant they have to be 100% in compliance and that they only want the gold from heaven. They don't want to mix it with some garbage from Ganges and, and some garbage from another place and, and mix these things. <laughs> they, they want only from what comes from the kawthar, from Allah And that Allah will test them, test them, test them once they're sincere and Allah sees that sincerity and that they're not going to mix from these different realities then Allah begin to bestow upon that servant from that ocean and they become custodians of that reality. And they never mixed it with other realities and, and people who don't understand that and hear them talk they, they think, oh this is mixed with you know other hocus pocus. No, just they don't understand the realities of Islam. People don't understand energy anymore. So you go somewhere and they say, why well, you have this blue turquoise stone, what is that going to do for you? You think the stone will help you? I say, no, why would the stone help me? But if you understood the color of blue, you knew that it took your eyes and the eyes are very dangerous from what Allah created of insan. The power that each person's eyes have, you have to be very careful of that. What you look at and what kind of energy that you're sending. They say even looking at your own children you have to be very careful. Don't look at them envious, don't look at people with, with the, too much uh, from your eyes. Try to look down and, and look to your feet because everyone has an energy they put out. And people don't know that energy but the turuks they understand the reality of energies inshaAllah. With that Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa wa Bisiri Surat Al Fatiha.